Hello and welcome to question 9. In question 9, we're being tested on principal value. So this is under trigonometry. So what is principal value? Let's take some time to understand why is there a need for such a thing called principal value. Now, let me first draw the cosine graph. A quick revision on graph sketching. The cosine graph looks like this. And it curves upwards here and reaches back 1 and 2 pi. Let me draw also just, you know, the negative side here over here. And there you go. This is the graph of y equals to cosine x. And we have no problem with this most of the time because I can think of cosine as a function, meaning that I can write this as f of x equals to cosine x. What does that mean? A function is basically a machine. So if you look at this machine here and I call this machine f, so that means if I put in values of x, what comes out is cosine x. How does this relate to the graph? It means that if I substitute different values of x, for example, I substitute x equals to pi, then you can go to the graph and read. Oh, when x equals to pi, cosine x equals to negative 1. In the machine point of view, it means that if I put in an input of pi, what comes out will be negative 1. If I put in, say, 2 pi, it will be positive 1. Yeah, if I put in 2 pi, it will be positive 1. Oh, this is such a bad sketch. I'm sorry. Let me just fix this very quickly. Yeah. So, this is what the machine means. Right? And it works very well. We love it. The only problem is when we have an inverse machine. Right? When I want to put in, say, values of y to get what is cosine inverse of y, I have a problem. Let me show you what the problem is by drawing a straight line. Oops. Right. Say I want to know what happens when this line is not very straight. Just yeah, move it a bit. Say I want to find out what happens when y is equal to 0 0.5. Oops, why can't I write? So, sorry about that. Yeah. Say when y equals to 0 0.5. I want to know what is the x value, you know, what is cosine of what gives me 0 0.5. I end up having four answers over here, just in this range of negative 2 pi to 2 pi. Here's one answer. Here's another answer. Here's another answer. Here's another answer. This is a problem for a machine because a machine should only give you one output. It shouldn't give you multiple outputs. So what is the solution? What can we do to make sure the machine only shows us one answer? I mean, if you ask your calculator, what is cosine inverse of 0 0.5? Does it give you four answers? No, it doesn't. It only gives you one answer. How does it do it? You should ask yourself the question. How it does it is, we will disregard some parts of the graph, right? For just for the inverse function, right? For cosine, uh, whatever I erase is still true. But for just for the inverse function, I'm going to erase some parts of the graph. I'm going to erase it up to pi. Oh, sorry. I should erase the letter pi itself. I'll erase up to here. Okay. So why this? Why is this the solution? That is because if I were to now move this orange line up and down, you notice that I no longer have multiple solutions. I always have one solution no matter what I choose, as long as I choose y between uh, 1 and negative 1, of course. Let me put that back. 1 and negative 1. Yeah. So this is why we have defined cosine inverse of, say, x. The answer is always between 0 and pi. This is what we, what we mean by the range of the principal values of cosine inverse. Okay. So now let's look at the question. Write down the principal value right, in radians uh, of this thing over here. So I think the first thing I need to evaluate is what's inside this bracket. What is negative sine pi over 3? And that tests you on another part of trigonometry, which is your special ratios. Right? So this one should look familiar. These are your special ratios. But in this case, we're doing in radians. So let's do a quick conversion. 0 is also 0 radians. 30 is pi over 6. 45 is pi over 4, this is pi over 3, and this is pi over 2. And you should know this by now, this is 0, this is half, this is uh, root 2 over 2, this is root 3 over 2, this is uh, 1. Okay, and this is the reverse, uh, 1 over 2, this is 0. 
Another way you can remember this that makes it a bit easier is this is actually root 0 over 2, root 1 over 2, and this is actually root 4 over 2. So then you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in square roots on top, and the denominator is always over 2. Right? Just an easier way to remember if you have problem remembering. Okay, so what is sine pi over 3? Sine pi over 3 is over here, root 3 over 2. So let me write down the question. Cosine inverse negative sine pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2. So if I put in the y value, right, over here, y ranges from 1 to negative 1. If I put in negative root 3 over 2, say somewhere around here, right, if I put this inside here, what would be the x value over here? And you can tell this is in the second quadrant, right? This is in the second quadrant. So I can actually work out what is the, uh, the reference angle first, right? To work out the reference angle, uh, I can say that maybe in the second quadrant, the answer actually is 180, which is pi minus our reference angle. And what is our reference angle? Our reference angle is cosine inverse of the positive version of root 3 over 2. Okay, and then you can go back to this again. What is cosine inverse of this one? Root 3 over 2? It's pi over 6. Okay. So our reference angle actually is pi over 6. That means that this angle over here is pi over 6 away from pi. Yeah? This answer here is about pi over 6 away from pi. So the total angle is actually pi minus pi over 6. And that will give you the answer of 5 pi over 6. That is the answer for question 9a. Now let's look at 9b. 9b is an interesting question because you're given a, a triangle with x, y, and z as the three angles. You are assured that x and y are acute angles such that sine of x is equal to that and sine of y is equal to other something else. Now you define the exact value of tangent of the last angle, z, without using a calculator. So I've drawn a random triangle where x and y are acute angles. So what you can do actually is you can imagine this, there's a way to rotate this such that x and y, you know, the line, this over here is flat on the ground. Yeah? Any random triangle, acute, just lay this flat on the ground. And what I'm going to do next is I am going to say this is z, the last angle here is z, but instead of writing z, I'm going to drop a, a you know, vertical line so that it's 90 degrees and let's call this A let's call this B so Z is equal to A plus B okay now we know that sine of X is 8 over 17 I will use uh, maybe white for this one now let's use pink right sine of X is 8 over 17 so that tells me opposites over hypotenuse yeah if I consider just this triangle over here 8 over 17. Okay, and if you do a uh, Pythagorean's theorem, you find that this is 15. Yeah, so for this triangle on the left, we have a 15, 8, 17 triangle, Pythagorean triples. Okay, and on the other side, let's use orange, sine of y is 3 fifths. So that tells me opposite over hypotenuse is 3 is to 5. Okay, which tells me that this last side here is a 4 if you use Pythagorean's theorem again. Now, how do we find tangent z? I can say that tangent z is actually tangent a plus b. Tangent a plus b is equals to tangent a plus tangent b minus, oh, sorry, over 1 minus tangent a times tangent b. So what is tangent a? Tangent A is, if I look at this angle, what is the opposite and what's the adjacent? Tangent A is 15 over 8. Tangent B is 4 over 3. So I can work this out. 15 over 8 plus 4 over 3 divided by 1 minus 15 over 8 times 4 over 3. Okay. So we can do a bit of cancellation in the denominator. 15 over 8, 4 over 3 divided by 3. This becomes a 5. Dividing by 4, this becomes a 2. Okay. 15 over 8 plus 4 over 3. Let me see. Uh, I can change it to denominator 24. So that is 45 over 24 plus 
plus 32 over 24. And this is divided by negative 3 over 2. Okay, negative 3 over 2. Huh? And let me see what I get for my answer. I'll get a 77 over 24 times negative 2 over 3. I think we have some cancellations here. This can be cancelled. So this is a 12. And the answer is negative 77 over 36. That is the answer for part B. Is there a part C? Uh, no. So that is the answer for question 9. Uh, hope this is helpful and I'll see you in the next question.